All right, so you're thinking about making a move to Arizona. You currently live outside of Arizona. How do you make that transition with the least amount of stress possible on your shoulders? Because the stress of that move can be pretty overwhelming. So let's go through some steps. What I would do if I were you thinking about making that move. And yes, I am wearing a posture corrector because sitting at the desk tends to really hurt my posture. So went on Amazon, bought this for 20 bucks, and here I am sitting with it on. Look absolutely ridiculous, but hopefully it helps. But let's get into the video right now. Hello guys, my name is Jeremy Fuse. Welcome to this YouTube channel that's all about uh, Arizona. Living in Arizona, moving to Arizona, purchasing a house in Arizona. I am a top realtor in the valley, been in it for many years, have lived here and grown up here my entire life. And so I always like to say I'm pretty freaking biased when it comes to Arizona because I think it is without a doubt the best place to live. It's, it's the perfect state. It really is the perfect state. And so I'm pretty biased about it. So if, take take what I say, you know, with a grain of salt because I'm going to lean in the direction of Arizona. So anyway, Anyway, you're thinking about making a move. You've heard how great it is here. You've seen other YouTubers talk about Arizona. You've seen my other videos talk about Arizona. You're like, yeah, I really want to go check out Arizona. How do I do that? Right. And the first question we have to kind of answer is, do you currently own a home wherever you are? Or do you not? Right. And do you currently rent? If you currently rent, making that transition is significantly easier uh, because you don't have a giant asset to worry about in trying to make your equity liquid, liquidate your biggest asset and make that move. Right. And so first thing I really want to talk about is if you are a homeowner, let's just say you live in Idaho, right? Just make up something. You live in Idaho. You currently own a house over there. You want to get out of potato land. I don't want to say that. It might be disrespectful. You want to get out of the cold and everything Idaho has to offer. You want to get into the beautiful Arizona weather. What should you do? And what are the steps you should take? Well, first and foremost, you need to find where you want to live here, right? And highly, highly, highly recommend coming out here for a few days, driving around. I currently have a client doing it as we speak. I'm showing them houses later. I've, I've given them all the hot spots to go check out. We did a discovery call. Hey, what is your lifestyle? What are you looking for? Are you looking for restaurants? Are you looking for cheap? Are you looking to be outside of the city? Are you looking at like, what are you looking for? What is the lifestyle? And then find a location that kind of fits where you want to live. Cause we have everything that you could want from busy to nightlife, living in country land, right? Like it's, we have everything you want. Are you a horse person? What, whatever. Right. And so have that discovery call. Where do you want to live and understand what the geographic landscape looks like here in Metro Phoenix. Okay. So you have to understand that first. Highly recommend you take a flight out here, find one for 150 bucks round trip whenever it fits your schedule. Spend a few days here, drive around, check it out, see if it's something that you're interested in. Also, I would all, and a lot of people might disagree with this, I would highly encourage you to do that through summer because you wanna understand what kind of heat is here in summer, right? So come down in July or August, feel the 110, 115, see if that's something you can deal with. Now, 99% of people say, hey, I'd rather deal with that than you know three feet of snow and you're out there in 30 degree weather shoveling snow just to get your car out of the driveway. But just, you wanna understand it, right? You wanna know, hey, how hot really does that feel? Because I can tell you, you don't really want to be outside when it's 110. It doesn't feel good, right? Unless you're by some sort of body of water, which I've talked about that in length in other videos. So figure that out first, right? Do your research, have someone, like it doesn't have to be me, but someone like me in your world who lives here that you can use as a resource. Hey, what is this area like? Hey, can you recommend this? And start there, right? Second, you really need to identify what the home values are in the area you're trying to move to, right? That makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of different tools to do that. Highly recommend hitting me up or a local agent so you're not using a Zillow or a realtor.com and you're using actual information that is true and not very wrong most of the time. I highly recommend that, right? Understand what the price points are. The third thing is make sure you talk to a mortgage professional, okay? Even if you're not ready to move for six months or whatever it might be, whatever your timeline is, have that conversation with someone in the mortgage industry that can help you identify what price point you should be looking in. A lot of people get this part wrong because they go on Google and they type in mortgage calculator and they punch in everything that they think and it spits out a number. And now they start shopping at that number. Then they go to get pre-qualified and that number is drastically different. And so I, I there's highly, highly recommend just having that conversation with the lender. And if you don't know of a lender, one, like you can ask me always. Two, you can literally just go post on social media and you will find one, right? Make sure you vet them and it's you, you typically want to use a referral because a bad lender makes everything absolutely terrible. And so if you need one, just let me know and I have an amazing one. But you need to understand what price point you're looking at. Like you have to. It is so important. You don't want to mess this part up. You you don't want to go to mortgagecalculator.com and you punch in info and you think a number is this and it turns out to be completely wrong. Okay, You don't want to do that. That is not a good time because you're going to be looking at a certain price point and now you actually go to get pre-qualified and that price point drops. Your whole plan is 
You don't want to do it. Okay, third, you need to have a conversation with an agent in your area. You have to do this. I highly, 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 highly don't recommend trying to do it on your own. I don't recommend that. You want somebody to help you facilitate this. This is a tricky thing. It's going to come down to timing. It's going to come down to being an expert in your market and how to sell houses and how to time the sale with the move and make it seamless, as seamless as it can be, right? And so you need to talk to an agent and say, hey, if I list my house on X, what can we list it for? Send me a net sheet. Make sure you ask for a net sheet. Say, what will I net? Here's my mortgage payoff. Here's what I think we can sell it for. I always, on that net sheet, I highly, highly, highly recommend, I'm, I'm repeating a lot of words today. I highly recommend you saying, hey, make sure you bake in concessions and repair costs. I want worst case scenario. What am I going to net? You don't want to go based off of best case scenario. You don't want to do that. That is setting yourself up for success. What is worst case scenario? Plan around worst case. Everything else is gravy on top. So have that conversation with the agent. If you need one, holler out. If you need anything involving this video, let me know, comment. Like I have referral sources all over the country. I spend a lot of my time networking so I can do things just like this and refer good agents to people, right? Not every agent is built equally, I promise you that. So don't just hire the first agent you talk to. You make sure you're doing the interviews and saying, hey, like, what can you get me for my house? And make sure you're using the agent that you trust. Follow your gut. I'm a big gut guy. Follow your gut. If your gut is telling you to go with something, trust it. Don't fight it. Don't fight your gut when it comes to people in real estate. Real estate's tricky. You gotta find the good one. There's a lot of bad eggs. Go find the good egg, okay? So you can use your online resources if you choose to to find local local knowledge, right? Like the Zillow's realtor.com. If you want to go to a more upgrade version, you can find that agent first thing. But if you don't, if you're just using Zillow, because that's what a lot of people are doing these days, even though a lot of that information is inaccurate, you can do that. Then you talk to a lender. Then you talk to the agent in your area. Then you, you find the agent in the area you want to move to. Arizona, AKA, hire me. Few are better. I promise. You find the agent and they can start sending you actual houses based on the budget that the lender gave you. Okay. It is very important. All these steps need to go hand in hand. They have to, if you want to make it seamless, because I have information that you don't know. Your listing agent has information that you don't know. Your lender has information that you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And that is totally okay. That is totally okay. That's how it's supposed to be. It's not like I go and walk into some other industry and go, Hey, I know how to do your job, right? You're not supposed to know what the heck you're talking about. That's why people like me and, and mortgage professionals exist. Like we're here to facilitate and help you get from point A to point B, whatever your goals are. We're there. We're here to meet them, right? So looking to make the move. So once you actually get your house listed on the market, you've talked to the lender, you have some sort of idea of where you're going and what price point you're in. Here's the tricky part is timing things to work in your favor, right? Because let's say you sell, let's say your house closes September 1st, right? Where you live in Idaho closes September 1st. First thing is you never know the house is actually going to close, right? That buyer could cancel and it screws up the entire thing and it has this domino effect and ruins your whole plan. That is an option, right? That could happen. It's very feasible. So here's why I recommend doing this in your budget. I'm sure you have some sort of budget. How much is going to cost you to make the move? I highly recommend you finding an Airbnb or a short term rental that you can lock in for 90 days. I know it's going to cost you maybe seven, eight grand, some depending on what you want to do. It's going to cost you a good chunk of change. It will eliminate a significant amount of stress, a significant amount of stress. If you can lock in a rental and you can use like a service like pod or, you know, something like that to transfer all your stuff. So it's not like you have to move it all and keep moving it, right? You can find a spot to, to host all your stuff, to keep all your stuff in a storage facility somewhere. And then you just come into an Airbnb that's already furnished, right? So you don't need to bring all your furniture. All you have to do is bring clothes. You move out of your house in Idaho. You live in that Airbnb for 90 days or short-term rental, whatever, right? Somewhere for 90 days. Now your house in Idaho is vacant. So that eliminates the stress from the constant showings and keeping the house clean, which is the most stressful part for a homeowner when it comes to selling because the showing requests come in in 15, 30 minute increments. So it'll be at like two to 215 and then three to 315. So you have like this 45 minute gap, which is really awkward and weird. So you don't know what to do. So then you end up staying out of the house the entire time and you're exhausted from being out of the house for four or five hours a day. And so if you can come into it, eliminating that, right? So now you're going straight into the Airbnb for 90 days. Your house in Idaho is vacant. You don't have to deal with any stress of selling that unless your home doesn't sell, but that's a totally different conversation. So you have no stress there. Now you live here. Now here's the important part. Once that house sells, the fuse is lit, right? So that's what I call it, the fuse is lit. So now you're going to liquidate that asset. That's going to go into your bank account. Let's say you make a hundred grand, right? That's going to go into your bank account. You have a lease for another, let's call it 45 days. You need to find a house within two weeks to make sure you have 30 days to close the escrow process. So the fuse is lit and we can go, right? We're not waiting on you to actually get here to go see houses. We're not waiting on other things to happen. We are ready to go. And so that is very seamless. And then your furniture and all this stuff is held in the storage facility and you can go and have it delivered. It is by far, this process is by far the least stressful way to make a move that is from out of state. It costs a little bit more money, but you're going to be able to find the house you want. You're going to be able to eliminate all the stress and you're still going to net significant amount of money from the sale, right? Just tuck some of that away to make this transition the best you can, the best you can. Because moving sucks, dude. Like it sucks moving down the street. It sucks. It's not a good time. Selling your house sucks. It sucks. It's not a good time. Buying a house sucks. It sucks. 
with little peaks and valleys of excitement until you close and then you're through the roof, right? None of this is a good time. And so you want to try to create a process and a system to make it as least stressful and the least load bearing on yourself, right? You want to just come in and try to make it as smooth as possible. And I promise you, if you use this method and you just, you spend the extra whatever, six, seven grand on the short term rental, if you do it, you will thank yourself. I promise you, you'll thank yourself. And so make sure you're just tucking some of that money aside from the sale of your house or from wherever you have money, your nest egg, your savings, 401k, your stocks, wherever you're pulling money from, tuck it away, use it to make this process seamless. Okay, guys, again, my name is Jeremy Fuse. If you need anything about Arizona, please comment. I put my contact info in the in the comments. You can call, you can text, you can email, whatever it is, whatever you need. If you're looking for recommendations, if you're just in town visiting family, like I always think, use me like you would a doctor, right? Meaning you have a question, you call them. You don't necessarily, like I always say, use me as if you had a doctor friend, right? Where if you had something pop up, you would just give them a call and be like, hey, I got this thing happening. What do you think it is? Like, I don't care if you're buying or not. I just want to be a resource for you. Call me up and say, hey, I really need a good restaurant in the Chandler area. I'm looking for a Mexican restaurant in Gilbert. I'm looking for Italian in Scottsdale, whatever it is. Find me, text me, call me, use me and abuse me. Love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.